Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is an important complication in anesthesia, trauma, and medicine, and can develop rapidly into a life-threatening emergency. Pneumothorax exists when there is air in the pleural space. The pleural space is a potential space between the parietal and visceral pleura, usually in close position and contains a small amount of serous fluid. At the end of expiration, there is no pressure differential between intraalveolar and atmospheric pressure. Intrapleural or transpulmonary pressure is subatmospheric at negative 4 to 6 cmH2O. It is generated by the opposing elastic recoil of the lung and the chest wall. It keeps the lungs expanded and also opposes the tendency of the thoracic wall to move outwards. When air enters the intrapleural space, Negative transpulmonary pressure is lost. Lung collapses while the chest wall moves outwards. Air can enter the intrapleural space via a breach in the parietal pleura, visceral pleura, or mediastinal pleura. For example, via intrapulmonary alveolar rupture or gas insufflated into the abdomen under pressure. Size of a pneumothorax will increase in positive pressure ventilation, usage of nitrous oxide, or reduction in atmospheric pressure, for example, during air travel. Causes of pleural breach include traumatic causes such as penetrating injury, rib fractures, or blast injuries. Surgeries at risk of pneumothorax includes nephrectomy, spinal surgery, tracheostomy, laparoscopic, or esophageal mediastinal perforation. Anesthetic causes include central venous line insertion, nerve blocks, or barotrauma from mechanical ventilation or gas injectors. Miscellaneous causes include weakened alveolar septa secondary to pulmonary diseases or cataminial pneumothorax. In intrapulmonary alveolar rupture, gas escapes from the alveolus, dissects towards the hilum and ruptures the mediastinal pleura. Causes include barotrauma from mechanical ventilation, injectors of gas, blast injury, or asthmatic attacks. Patients with COPD and bullous emphysema are at risk. Patients in whom the alveolar septa are weakened by infection, collagen vascular diseases, connective tissue disorders, or severe hypovolemia are also at risk. Other air leaks include pneumomediastinum, pneumopericardium, or subcutaneous emphysema. To diagnose pneumothorax, in the awake patient, they might complain of chest pain, cough, shortness of breath, or referred shoulder tip pain. Signs include tachypnea, tachycardia, reduced chest wall movement, hyperresonance on percussion, reduced breath sounds, decreased vocal parameters of the affected site, and there are tests such as the coin test and Haman sign to assist in diagnosis. Chest X-ray will confirm the clinical diagnosis. The rate of reabsorption of air is up to 2% of the volume of the hemithorax affected in 24 hours in conservative management. In the anesthetized patient, signs of pneumothorax include hypotension, tachycardia, diminished unilateral chest movement, wheezing, hyperresonance on percussion, decreased breath sounds, increased airway pressure, tracheal deviation away from the affected site, elevated central venous pressure if it's measured, cyanosis, arrhythmia, and shock. Investigations include chest x-ray, ultrasound to look for absence of sliding sign. However, do not delay treatment if pneumothorax is suspected. In ARDS patients, they may have a pneumothorax but with little evidence of pulmonary collapse because the non-compliant lung loses the elasticity which would otherwise allow it to collapse away from the chest wall. In patients with chronic lung diseases, pneumothoraxes may be loculated. The management of pneumothorax. First, discontinue nitrous oxide if it's used, provide 100% oxygen, and decompress via needle thoracosynthesis. Rapid insertion of a chest drain should follow 
inserted at the safe triangle. If a simple pneumothorax, the size recommended is 8 to 14 French, and if it is for drainage of blood or fluid, the recommended size is 24 to 28 French. An underwater seal drain components includes a drainage tubing with distal ports, underwater seal and a collection chamber of approximately 20 cm in diameter. It is an airtight system which maintains a sub-atmospheric intraptural pressure. The underwater seal acts as a one-way valve through which air is expelled from the pleural space and air is prevented from re-entering during the next inspiration. This allows re-expansion of the lung and resolution of hemodynamic instability by resolving mediastinal shift. The drainage tube is submerged to a depth of 1 to 2 cm in the collection chamber. This allows minimum resistance to drainage of air, maintains the underwater seal even in a large inspiratory effort. If it is too shallow, air may entrain back into the drainage tube. If it is too deep, pressure may be too high to vent out the pneumothorax gas. The depth of water should be 3 to 5 cm. The collection chamber should be 100 cm below the chest because sub-atmospheric pressures up to negative 80 cmH2O can be produced in obstructed inspiration. Drainage could be under gravity or via suction of about 15 to 20 mm mercury. Issues include when clamping the chest drain where there is a continuous air leak, this risks converting a simple pneumothorax to a tension pneumothorax. To allow better patient mobility, we can alternatively use a Helmlich flutter one-way valve. If the collection chamber is raised above the level of the patient, retrograde flow of fluid may occur. Persistent bubbling could signify bronchopleural air leak. When there is absence of oscillations in the drainage tube, there could be several causes, such as obstruction by clots or kinks, loss of sub-atmospheric pressure, or complete re-expansion of the lung. These are my references. Thank you.